Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today. Space weather studies, cosmology, climate forcing, and an aid to your geophysical understanding. We'll start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours about as quiet as possible given the supply of bright active regions on the south. Small dark dispersed coronal holes incoming on the north as well, and there is even less to report in the solar wind. Amidst the generally calming stream, we did get some elevated readings, but when your spike up is to about average solar wind speed, the geomagnetic disruption will be small, all green bars at the bottom. There is an interesting feature visible on the sun this morning, but first let's see the Earth's version of it. The lowest L-shell plasma arcs where the equatorial ion fountain can be found. Now scale that up to solar wind power outflow for the sun and look at the left side. That arc over the equatorial region is indeed the same feature, and when you think about its outward push on Earth, it makes you wonder why they wonder why the solar wind accelerates as it leaves the outer corona. Folks, this is way overdue given the population and electrical dependence of Portugal. There has never been a study on the vulnerability points and induction pathways and induced current, and with sunspot maximum around the corner, they'll soon get a chance to see how well their models work. Let's quickly revisit the outer halo of galaxies, and this will be more than just an interesting science tidbit for veteran observers. Dr. Hoffmeister demonstrating the violation of physics laws by putting exotic dark matter particles in the outer halo. Of course, since 2011, our drumbeat is that there aren't any. Folks, welcome to a sheep in wolf's clothing, and no, I did not just have vocabularial dyslexia. It's meant to be a mainstream thumping confirmation, but only on its facade. This free-to-read paper offers quite the bounty when you dig in, including the fact that even using ensembles of state-of-the-art modeling, the results are, at best, provisional. By the way, this was a literature review of studies that ignored solar particle forcing and Earth's weakening magnetic field and provided no new data analysis. It does end by correctly pointing at the AMOC being mostly a natural variability and how it is expected to weaken over the coming decades. We discussed this yesterday in tandem with the Gulf Stream and heat transport shutdowns and the cold climate bomb waiting in the Beaufort Gyre. See, it's just a sheep. This next one fits the bill even better. Remember transitive properties from school? If A equals B and B equals C, then A must also be equal to C. Well, it turns out that there's an even craftier way to prove the sun controls the North Atlantic than via direct data comparisons. First, you need to look at the extreme polar vortex activity, high and low. Textbook readers, that's chapter 4 in terms of the solar control, and with it we can predict the NAO. Of course, the entirety of the top-down forcing pathway from the stratosphere to the troposphere is driven by the sun, both the radiance and particle forcing, and its indirect effects on the global electric circuit. That's chapter 4 and 5. And of course, almost nothing atmospheric fails to carry the mark of ENSO patterns. And in chapter 4, you can also learn about how this is possibly the most robust of the space weather correlations to large-scale modes and oscillations. Textbook available at otf.cells.com with our other books and our gear. But for detailed specifics and previews of the textbook, go to spaceweathernews.com slash publications. Last but not least, a double whammy with space weather and geophysics of the Earth catastrophe cycle. They have figured out that mantle conductivity and crustal thickness explain why some areas defy geomagnetic latitude during solar storms. Sweden, it wasn't bad luck back in 2003, it's just Sweden. But more importantly is the fact that you should reconcile the notion that regular cycle storms already touch the crust mantle boundary, the low velocity zone, and deeper. When super flares or a micronova shockwave is considered, the pathways may not even need to be the large scale mantle plumes to the core. Worse, those could be the discharge pathways, since we know that they do indeed rise as those enormous lava lamp like features, and at the low velocity zone, finger up to the crust. Some of you may live on a core mantle boundary plume and not know it. It is merely a delicate thermoelectric equilibrium that locks the crust on top of the liquid mantle, restraining the twisting, shifting, lifting, and tugging of the glaciers. When we are discussing the electromagnetic actions at the crust mantle boundary, there is no small or insignificant study. By the way, this was Einstein's dying failure, not finding an explanation for what he knew happened to the Earth. This is what we answer in our new book, The Next End of the World. It is available for pre-order at otf.cells.com 
with the rest. And again, the expanded details on the textbook are at spaceweathernews.com publications. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.